Hello, thanks for joining us on this edition of the 6 p.m. Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news, conveners of the Anglophone General Conference urged the government of the Republic of Cameroon to call for a ceasefire and send the military back to the barracks in the northwest and southwest regions of the country in order to reach a point where an agreement can take also the country out of the troubled waters in the northwest and southwest regions of the republic of cameroon in the meantime faco lawyers in the southwest region are mounting pressure on the limbe gendarmerie command to release their colleague who has been in detention for over 48 House now and in Mali the military is promising elections after overthrowing President Bubaka Keita and his government. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this edition of the 6 p.m. newscast on Equinox Television. And we're going to begin right away in the southwest region of the country where common law lawyers have been mounting pressure on the Limbe Gendarmerie Brigade Command or Limbe Gendarmerie Command uh, to liberate the uh, colleague who has been in detention for over. 48 hours now on the common law uh, lawyers were protesting today at the gendarmerie command base in uh, limbe some of them were there yesterday and uh, today more than 70 of them converged on the limbe gendarmerie command base mounting pressure for the liberation of barrister ayukotang ndep congo who has been in detention since yesterday and more than 70 uh, lawyers converge on the Limbe Gendarmerie Command base today. He is one of the lawyers of Sisiku Ayuktabe and other detainees of the Anglophone crisis. He's still in detention. To now take a listen to the president of the FACO Lawyers Association in this extract. Colleagues. When we came here to verify what uh, transpired, we were told both by the investigating officer and our colleague that um, he was being detained because he took photographs of a suspected Ambazonian in hospital. But the basic f uh, facts as uh, related by even the investigator is and corroborated, rather cor given by Ayukatang and corroborated by the investigator was that Mr. Ayukatang was acting as a lawyer for Besson Blandin who was killed in Siku last week. And after discussing with the parents of the deceased, he was informed that one of the victims of the uh, incident was a boy called Elijah who was lying sick or ill at the Limbe Hospital. That was the president of the FACO Lawyers Association, Barrister Benjamin Eno Abo, who was uh, speaking there in that extract concerning uh, the lawyer who has been detained for over 48 hours now, and he is still in detention. In the meantime, women of the Northwest and Southwest uh, Women's Tax Force uh, mounting a pressure on both uh, parties involved in the Anglophone crisis that has been pulling on for close to four years now to put an end to the killings and destruction of properties going on in Anglophone uh, Cameroon. Some of them were uh, on a peaceful protest in the town of Boya uh, yesterday calling on separatist fighters to drop their guns so that peace 
can return in the northwest and southwest regions. Details in this report. Mice of Florence Ayafo, treasure, and most recently, comfort, killed brutally at Makanga quarters in Muyuka subdivision of the southwest region. Women of the southwest region, hit by the crisis, say it's enough. I cried, seeing my fellow woman being slaughtered like an animal. Up to now, I don't think that feeling has gotten off me. The feeling of Florence has not gotten off me till this time. May her soul rest in peace. The women that converged at Bongo Square used the occasion to share their testimonies on how they felt seeing fellow women being killed in the midst of the Anglophone crisis. I found myself very weak and crying like a baby when I saw pictures of comfort. I asked myself if we were in Cameroon. I asked myself what is really going on? Why are women being the target? I cried until today. I decided to come out even as a pastor to join women in the Southwest to decry and say enough is enough. From Bongo Square, the women singing songs. Marched up to the governor's office where the Southwest Regional Governor passed a strong message to the women. What do you go back to your various villages and quarter to tell the other women to go out and call names of those whose sons are doing it. You know them. They are abroad. They are with us. They know. They know. You know. Today, you know those who are killing us, those who are killing your children. It is no longer a secret. They are there. Bernard Okala Bilai. Arts. I want to tell you, those women, that those who carry such atrocities were delivered by women, and I'm sure that their mothers are somewhere, because today, those who do it, they are among us, they are living in the quarters, we know them, sometimes we just suspect them, but we refuse to denounce them. It is not the first time these women are staging a protest march against the killings ongoing in the southwest and northwest region. But the crisis continues to create fear in the heart of the people living in the northwest and southwest regions. And today, some Cameroonians under the banner of a civil society platform known as Le Patriot Indomitable, or the Indomitable Patriots, took to the streets protesting today in front of the United States Embassy in Yaoundé and calling for an end to the atrocities in the two Anglophone regions of the Republic of Cameroon and they are urging the American governments to rap repatriate all Cameroonians who are abroad and at largely masterminding the happenings in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. The senior divisional officer of the Mimi division in the southwest region has given some material support to the vigilante committee groups in the five subdivisions of his area of command, Tundong Chamberlain gave out the uh, materials to the different vigilante committees to help them in the discharge of their duties within the framework of efforts to uh, put an end to the killings and the destruction of properties going on in Anglophone Cameroon for over uh, four years today. And the vigilante committees uh, received uh, motorcycles and other equipment that will help them in the fight against uh, secessionist activities in those parts of the country. And it should be noted that Meme Division is made up of Konye, Mbonge, Kumba 1, 2, and 3 subdivisions. Take a listen to the Senior Divisional Officer of the Meme Division, Tundong Chamberlain. Uh, 
to support uh, all the descent group in the mid division. You know, the exercise is not easy for them. That's why he thought necessary to send uh, this small gift to them, to empower them and to permit them to work without any uh, major problem. Uh, what I could, uh, I could not openly say is that uh, monthly they are going to have a small team. Uh, they will tell you exactly uh, those are concerned. They are going to tell you. Uh, in general, uh, we are trying to organize them because. Uh, Five men who tied a girl to a tree and uh, flocked her for stealing a phone in Kumba in the Meme Division, southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon, have been arrested when the incident occurred last August 13, 2020, and uh, it went uh, viral on social media with the uh, separatist fighters accused of the act, and the perpetrators have now been arrested. Smanjik and Gabriel Hasmo. On August 13, 2020, a video of a girl tied to a tree while she was being flogged went viral on social media. According to the voice behind the video, it attached the atrocity to separatist fighters. August 19, 2020, the senior divisional officer of Meme Division, Ntu Ndong Shambalin, is at Confidence Street in Kumbatu Subdivision, at the same area where the unfortunate incident occurred. Five young men have been arrested by security forces and all have no links with separatist activities. The girl who was tied to this tree and beaten was accused of stealing a mobile telephone. After an explanation was given to the senior divisional officer at the scene of the incident, the five culprits were later presented to the press Nkongo Samuel, 39-year-old, ex-prisoner who recently gained freedom thanks to the presidential pardon, said he gave just two strokes to the lady. Teba Bride, 24-year-old, was observing as the girl was being beaten. Amazo Ratex, 23-year-old, was the one who complained about the missing phone. The father begged that they should arrest the matter and the father. And they should not take the matter in the gendarme. That is going to buy me another phone. That we should allow the matter like that. So never know that this man has detected it. Tangi Henry, 30 year old, tied the girl to the tree, and Nunke Romeo, 17 year old, acted as the cameraman on that fateful day. All five youths arrested will now answer from the justice system of Cameroon for their acts. Now we're taking you up north to the far north region of the Republic of Cameroon, notably to uh, the locality of Gidagai, where the inhabitants uh, of that part of the Mayo Kani division have not been able to sleep for weeks now. And this is because of constant floods hitting that part of the country during heavy downpour. And they are now living in fear and uncertainty, not knowing what is going to happen to them the next second, minute, hours or days. For me, I'm from Sandra Hasmo. Welcome to Gidigis, where parents are uncertain if their children will be able to return and study in this school. Government School Gidigis for the 2020-2021 school year. They are worried that a natural disaster is at the verge of sweeping the school building into River Gidigis. The natural disaster in question is flawed from River Gidigis, which has already rendered over 300 persons homeless as their houses have been eroded away. The people of this subdivision in the Mayokani division of the far north region of Cameroon have lost reasons to sleep. The houses include the full gospel church building of the area which has been abandoned by Christians. 
The danger looms over a subdivision with 8,000 inhabitants, comprising four ethnic groups, notably the Tupuris, the Mundangs, the Masas and Fulanese. Even after an evaluation meeting of the Fano Regional Governor Mejiawa Bakari, together with the regional delegates of the Economy, Planning and Regional Development, inhabitants of the area are still waiting for a solution. An estimated 600 million francs CFE is needed to remedy the situation, according to the mayor for Gidegis. For me, I'm Strong Sander reporting there, and I told you in the headlines that the conveners of the Yang Lefun General Conference are urging the government of Cameroon to call for a ceasefire and send the military back to the barracks in the two Anglophone regions of the country. For them, that is the first step that should lead to the way out of the four-year-long armed conflict. They were meeting today in Cameroon's economic capital, uh, Douala, and they have call on the Cameroon government to understand that without a ceasefire, without the military back in the barracks, nothing can happen in the two Anglophone regions of the country. Peace cannot return. We'll be coming back to uh, that with greater details in our subsequent news editions. Now we're going to take a look at how government is intensifying the fight against the coronavirus pandemic as the country has now gone beyond 18,000 uh, cases in the country and of course in the city of Douala, one of the uh, areas uh, highly hit by the COVID 19 a pandemic several temporal COVID-19 screening centers have been created in Makulit for the report. The recent drop in hospital attendance rate since the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic in Cameroon is raising the need for the multiplication of order strategies that can encourage sick persons to go get themselves treated in hospitals. <laughs> With over 18,000 COVID-19 cases registered in Cameroon, the Ministry of Public Health has decided to strengthen measures in order to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. A COVID-19 temporal screening unit has been created in Logbaba, the Douala 3 subdivision. Samples are taken, analyzed, and five minutes later, results are given. Yes, I am to get tested. I am happy that I got myself tested. The increasing number of COVID-19 cases in the country pushed me to take this decision. Even though I was tested negative, I will continue respecting government's anti-COVID-19 barrier measures. Today, we have launched a sensitization and testing campaign here at the Lokbaba District Hospital. We have noticed that a lot of persons are now scared to go to the hospital. So we have decided to come closer to the population. The free screening and testing campaign will run from the 17th of August to the 13th of September 2020. It should be noted that COVID-19 testing is carried out free of charge and results given five minutes later. Now in Mali, the military is promising elections after the overthrow of President Ibrahim Boubaka Keita. The soldiers who championed the coup d'etat have set the plan to set up a civilian transitional government and hold new elections. The spokesperson for the soldiers said they acted to prevent the country from falling into further chaos. President Boubaka Keita resigned last night. He said he does not want blood to be spilled to maintain him in power. Take this. I would like at this moment, to remember the people of Malian. I would like at this precise moment, while thanking the Malian people for their accompaniment through these long years, for the warmth of their affection, to tell you my decision to resign from my functions, all my functions, from this moment onwards. 
toute notre fonction. And the African Union, where South African regional leaders and the United Nations Organization have condemned the coup. South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa, who is the current AU chairperson, urged the soldiers to release President Bubaka Keita and the other government officials who were detained and Mali, a vast country stretching into the Sahara Desert, is among the poorest countries in the world and it has experienced several military takeovers. It is uh, currently battling to contain a wave of jihadist attacks and ethnic violence. Ino Senazi has more. Jubilation still characterizes Mali following the military coup staged by soldiers early Tuesday, August 18, 2020. That led to the resignation of President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita and his government. Malian soldiers have this Wednesday said they plan to form a civilian transitional government that will organize fresh elections. Flanked by soldiers, committee spokesman Colonel Ismail Wagi invited Mali civil society and political movements to join them to create conditions for a political transition that will lead to elections, noting that the country is sinking into chaos, anarchy and insecurity, mostly due to the faults of the people who are in charge of his destiny. The military coup, which has led to arrest and detention of President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita and other members of his government, has been condemned by Mali's regional and international partners who fear Keita's fall could further destabilize the former French colony and West Africa's entire Sahel region. Meantime, the president of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mahamad, strongly condemns the arrest of Keita and other members of the Malian government, thus calling for their immediate release. On the other hand, the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, has suspended Mali membership following the arrest of President Ibrahim Boubacar. ECOWAS in a statement on Tuesday also closed the borders of its member states with Mali. All financial flows between its 15 members and Mali will be suspended. Mali is also suspended from its decision-making bodies. ECOWAS commission is to impose sanctions on the Putis and their partners and collaborators. The United Nations head Antonio Guterres condemns the arrest of Keita, calling for his immediate and unconditional release. He demands immediate restoration of constitutional order and rule of law in Mali. Antonio Guterres reiterated his call for a negotiated solution of their differences. The UN Secretary General urges all stakeholders, particularly the Defense and Security Forces, to exercise maximum restraint and uphold the human rights and the individual freedoms of all Malians. This is the fourth coup d'etat in Mali. The first was registered on November 19, 1968, against the government of then President Modibo Keita. The bloodless military coup was led by Lieutenant Musa Traoré, who then became head of state. On March 26, 1991, the second coup resulted in the overthrow of President Musa Traoré after two decades of dictatorship and eventually led to multi-party elections. On March 21, 2012, another coup d'etat was registered as mutinying Malian soldiers displeased with the management of the Traoric rebellion attacked several locations in the capital Bamako, including the presidential palace, state television and military barracks. The soldiers, who said they had formed the National Committee for the Restoration of Democracy and State, declared the next day that they had overthrown the government of Amadou Toumani Touré, forcing him into hiding. The fourth and latest is that of Tuesday, August 18th, 2020. Talking Point is up next.
is forced in with us in talking points. We are receiving a legal mind. Barista Kamu Alimen is the head of the Kamu Alimen law firm here in Cameroon's economic capital. Dwala and researcher, a PhD researcher in English law. Barista, you're welcome. Good evening, Mr. Babila. It's a Good pleasure being here. All right, we'll begin with uh, this issue of uh, five young men who have been arrested uh, for having flopped a girl, tying her to a tree, for having stolen a phone in the town of Akumba. What's uh, your take on that incident? Mr. Babila, it is wrong. It is wrong for those boys to, to transform themselves into into judges or whatever and giving uh, punishing those uh, the girls but i'm comforted to know that it's not a it's not linked to secessionist uh, group there was just some individuals who were doing that but my my worry about that is when i learned from your your good uh, report that uh, one ateba ateba was just watching so i just think that the deal should look in that case since people are so faithful to say that ateba uh, pride was an observer so I think his, 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 his case should be looked into. Does so that he doesn't exonerate an observer? Well, we'll see if he try to stop. If he try to stop them from doing it, then he has no problem. If he did not try to stop them, he will be, he, he will be charged for non-assistance to somebody in danger. Mm. And, yes, yes. And what's the crime reserved for somebody who finds himself in that kind of... Uh, situation? Well, it's still... It's still just a, observing and then you do nothing. You fail, you fail, you fail to assist. If he's proven that, if uh, because I was told some time ago that in the video he tried to assist to stop. So if he actually did, then he should be re he should be released because at least made an effort to stop them. You can only be held liable when you see it and you don't stop it. So you have a responsibility when you see somebody in danger to help the person. If you can, if you are not putting your own life in danger, because you cannot risk your own life to go and save somebody's life. So I think that is my take on that. All right and. Uh the conveners of the Young Lufun General Conference spoke today. Yes. And said the government of Cameroon must call a ceasefire, should call a ceasefire and send the military back to the barracks as the beginning of the solution. Do you Mr. think so? Mi Mr. Babila, before I will agree with that bet, from the looks of things, I think uh, it is not the best for now. You understand? They can, the army should do their job properly without abusing the rights of, of the citizens. But to remove them with all, what, what is going on, that we see people using machetes to cut people's neck, I think is going to be, is like leaving the population to some people who can take advantage. And another thing is that the, the, the members of that conference should know that government has a there duty. There is an argument that if the military go back to the barracks, if the soldiers are in the barracks, the separatists will have nothing to shoot. They will have nothing to fight. Mr. Babila, I take that with a pinch of salt. You have nobody to fight. I take that with, with a pinch of salt. When they go to cut that girl's head, was she uh, the military? Were they attacked by the military to, to have cut her head? When you look at the things, you see that maybe, I don't want to think it's Ambazonian again or what or some. There's a group of people that the government has the obligation to, to, to protect the citizens. And so if, if the condition is that the government should drop arms. Both of them should drop arms. If they come, if that, if they are saying that both the government and the and the the the, 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 the other fighters should drop arms, I'm okay for it. Yes, that's what they're saying. That yeah, both the of arms them should go yes. down, and then the military go back to the Good. Barracks. So it is easy to, to 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 see that the military drop. How easy is it to see that those other people carry arms drop it? You understand, Mr. Babila? It is it is more complicated than we see. It's very complicated than we see. Another reason is they are stopping at this point that what is the way forward. I've said in other interviews that I it was... That when this it part, was the it, way, you open the way. No, I, I've, I've, said, I've, said before that, I've said before in other interviews that it was a laudable initiative that uh, the all Anglophone Conference being chaired by Cardinal Tumi came into existence and that government would have assisted them to come up with a plan and to really identify what constitutes Anglophone problems. Because now, there are various factions. You have Anglophones who are federalists, you have Anglophones who want secession. And between those two, if they are going to dialogue with the government, which, which, which are, are we going to do? Me, for example, I'm a federalist and I say it openly. But there are some Anglophones that 
who are Ambazonians who will not want to hear federalism. You understand? So we need, first of all, to come as Anglophones and come to an argument, what exactly do we want? If some are saying that they want federalism, we'll go for a referendum between us. If federalists wins, fine. If the, the secessionists win, okay, we know the majority has gone. But I remain very, very skeptical that if the government should drop, the ambassador should be dropping. You know, I've, I'm one of the persons who have criticized the, the, the role of the government in the Anglophone crisis. But I remain very, very focused and I remain very objective in, in, my, in my pronouncements. There are some politicians and even international organizations who think that government should discuss with the secessionists because they are the ones at the center of the whole thing. Mr. Babylon, very, it, is what, it is what we've been saying all through. Government failed from the beginning to recognize the fact that in conflict, there are means of re resolving that conflict. And you cannot resolve a conflict without discussing with the, the, the conflicting parties. So the government should open dialogue, true dialogue with the, the opposing party. And I think he has already enough people to discuss with. Seseko Aetabe is in, is in prison. He's a leader. He's there because he's a leader. Start a frank dialogue with him. Uh, Manchu BBC and the others, they are, they, are, they are there. You know them. So to me, instead of stopping the military now, first of all, release those people who are in cell. You understand? You release those people who are in, in the prison, they will go back and talk to these other people, and then there will be a ceasefire. Now, as a lawyer, yes. you're saying that they should release those who have been arrested and detained. Their charges are leveled against them. They have been condemned, and, and so on. And the government is saying the law has to take its course. No, no, no. The president has powers to, to grant them amnesty. The president can do it. The president can in the, is in his powers. He's done so two or three times. Yes, so the, he can still do it for the for the for the police. interest for the interest of peace. The president can come and say, okay, these people should go, and then we sit and sort out this issue, because if we keep going the way we are going, Mr. Babila, the situation is getting worst. Is getting worse, and in effort to restore peace and normalcy in those two regions, vigilante groups have been created. In this newscast, we saw um, the senior division office of the Meme division handing over some uh, materials, uh, motorbikes, and other things well, to in a some vigilante committees. Can they help? Can no, the vigilante committees? No, in my humble opinion, no. In as much as I appreciate the the, the senior division officer for his uh, his active being so active, I think that that is not the right thing to do. The, the solution what comes from not the right thing to do? can those vigilante groups go and uh, go and go and fight those people who have um, who have arms how many are, how many are uh, because how many members of that group they cannot and don't do you know that when they go they see them they can target their families so they cannot do it if the regular army cannot do it do you think vigilante group will, will, will succeed the regular army has proven it has been proven that they cannot contain the situation then what about somebody says a vigilante group, he has maybe knife or whatever. He will not. Stopping people from buying cutlasses or iron rods does not solve the problem. Mr. Babila, start by releasing those who are in the prison. The president has the powers to do that. And then they go and talk and there will be, there'll be a ceasefire. After this ceasefire, they, a, a constructive dialogue is done in all honesty. And then they will, they will identify the root cause of the of, of, of the problem and see how to deal with it. If the government says, we are ready to talk about uh, whatever you are talking about. Now, Anglophones, you people have your referendum. Tell us exactly what you people want. From that, from the results, which will be fair, they will see. We, had, we did one before we, we joined the, 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 the French Cameroon. So why can we not still do so. one to sort this out? All right, let's talk about the um, barrister who is in detention in Limbe, Barista Ayuko Tang Kongo, who has been in detention for over 48 hours now. And the FACO lawyers have been mounting pressure on the uh, Limbe Gendarmerie Command to release him to know of it. He is still in detention till now. And he's been accused of, you know, collaborating uh, with cessationists uh, and so on. You know, the very first thing I condemn is that the gendarmes are not there to... Do, they, they just bring, they, they do the investigations and bring their reports to, to the appreciation of the state council. So to accuse him of that, it's, it's something said that he's being investigated for. 
and coming back a the lawyer president of the FACO lawyers association said that uh, everything is clear that he is uh, working for uh, he is his defending yes. he is defending his clients yes. defending detainees yes. of the young um, crisis you know i first of all tell my colleague who is in cell that we are together we are with him and that a lawyer in cell is every other lawyer in cell and that it is wrong even if he committed what they said two pictures there is an organization that takes care of lawyers bring him take him to the the, the attorney general the procurator general and they'll call the the the, 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 the organs in charge of and then we did the, the, something will be done so i think without really wasting much of your time mr babila uh it was not the right thing for me it's not the right thing in my opinion in other words he should be released he should be of course of course there's no there's no negotiation about that he should be released all right um, now there is uh, something um that's been happening in the two anglophone regions of the country some women who have been crying for peace crying for peace you saw in this newscast the women of the Northwest and Southwest Women's Tax Force yes. who were manifesting in Boya today, yesterday in a peaceful protest, calling on the separatist fighters to drop their guns. Um, do you think that this message can be heard? The President of the Republic has been doing that or has done that on several occasions and the guns are still talking in the bushes. They are still in the hands of young people. Can women, can the voice of women be the miracle bullet? That still, um, I'm doubtful. Because I don't say it's going to change. We started with Flores Ayafo. They moved to this other girl we saw dancing. And the other day is this one. We don't know who is coming next. And then, who are the perpetrators? Are these persons Ambazonians? You need to identify, are they Ambazonians? If it's Ambazonian, then Ambazonian has failed. If it's not Ambazonia, Ambazonia should do everything to clean their name. Because you cannot be fighting to, to protect us Anglophones and then your elements are, are treating other Anglophones that way. So, if Ambazonians feel that, if um, Ambazonians know that it is not them, they should clear their name. And whoever is responsible, the government, the, the, the law should take its course if they are apprehended. The law should take its course. And... Uh in the meantime, there is a problem highlighted by some of the common lawyers, and this is a problem that has been common law lawyers. Common, common law, law lawyers, common not common lawyers. Yes. Common law lawyers, yes. not common lawyers. <laughs> yes. Common law lawyers. Who, yes. uh, and this is a problem that um, was at the center of the um, escalation of the crisis, uh, late 2016, early 2017. Yeah. And I'm talking about the appointment of French-speaking uh, state councils in some parts of the two Anglophone regions, notably in Boya, uh, I think in, in, in Tico also. How is this a problem? Well, Mr. Babila, in my humble opinion, it's not uh, legally a problem. You understand? Because why do I say so? I think the focus where we had issues was with the bench you know the court is divided into two the bench the bench and the legal department and the the, the bench has a problem because some of the laws are not yet uh, uniformed harmonized or whatever some of the laws are not so the the francophone trained uh, civil law trained uh, judges were were not actually uh, vested with common law practice and there was a problem but at the level of the the, the legal department the the, the, the the penal code and the civil uh, criminal procedure code are harmonized and it goes for everybody. Where there is a problem might be from the fact that um, francophone, francophone state councils might be very close up by their, by their training. Why anglophones are very receptive. So the lawyers can be justified in the sense that they want a, a common law trained uh, state council to be in their courts because they are more receptive, they are more accessible, and they know, they know the importance of human rights as prescribed inside uh, in the in the C, uh, C, uh, CPC, the Criminal Procedure Code. So I think that is where the problem is. Mm. The way the state Francophone State Council behave, they behave is different from the way the Anglophone State Council usually behave. Let's talk about Mali. 
President Ibrahim Bubaka Keita has been overthrown and the military is announcing elections and of course the putting in place of a civilian transitional government. What do you think about what happened uh, in Mali yesterday, the coup d'etat? Well, I see two things. I see the determination of people, of the people, the Malian, they were so determined. And all this while have been on the street protesting that they want uh, the president to go. Another thing which is very important that I notice is the fact that the army in Mali is different from the army in, uh, in our context, Cameroon. Because in Cameroon, those people would have been killed. But you see that the army fraternized and, and took over the power, and I think it's for the interest of the population. So the lesson we should learn is that the army can work for the interest of the people. And the president decided to step down, dissolve the government and the assembly. It, it is the right thing he did to avoid spilling of blood. He acted rightly. But president should know that at one point they can easily go on their own volition or forced out of the out of office. And so every right thinking president should know that when you stay too much in power, you definitely end up poorly. And the CPP, the Cameroon People's Party and Stand Up for Cameroon Civil Society platform in Cameroon has been urging Cameroonians who have been urging Cameroonians to rise up and fight for a political transition in Cameroon, fight for uh, uh, this, the, the present regime to be brought down and replaced. Do this, you think such a thing can happen in Cameroon? Mr. Babila, the day God would decide to help us, he's going to do it. You understand? Because honestly, we need a transition in Cameroon. There's no doubt, there's no dispute about that. And if the people, the, 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 the people around cannot lead us into it, there is a, of our super, a super being, which is a God, which is our God, and he will take, definitely take care of that in, his, in due course. Nkambwa Limen, you are a legal mind member of the Cameroon Bar Association and head of the Nkambwa Limen Law Firm here in Cameroon's Economic Capital. Well, thanks for joining us today. It's always a pleasure, Mr. Babida. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. Goodbye. <laughs>